Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to build my very first PC. I've been thinking about building a computer for a while now. Something powerful enough for both video editing and gaming, but for an affordable price. I wanted a system that could handle modern titles in 1080p and 1440p with medium to high settings and also make my workflow in Adobe Premiere Pro way faster. Every single part here is a brand new Alpha Micro Center store. This is my very first build, so don't judge me too hard. I hope I pick the right parts for what I need. In this video, I'll show you every single component I bought, how much I paid, and we'll go through the whole process together from unboxing and assembly to install Windows and testing games in both 1080 and 1440p. By the way guys, this video isn't meant to be a full step-by-step -step tutorial, it's just me building my very first PC and sharing the experience. Alright, let's start the actual build. The first thing we're starting with is the motherboard. This is the ASUS B650 Emacs Gaming. It's a solid mid-range board with PCI Express 5.0 support, built-in Wi-Fi and plenty of M.2 slots for SSDs. Basically everything I'll need for a modern gaming and editing setup. I paid $131.79 for this one at Micro Center and it was actually part of the CPU bundle which made it an even better deal. The design looks really solid, made black PCB with silver accents on the heat sinks. It has that clean industrial look that fits perfectly with a modern gaming setup. You can tell Asus put some thoughts in the layout. Next up, the CPU, the heart of this build. It's an AMD Ryzen 5 7600X 6 core 12 thread processor running at 4.7 GHz in base mode and 5.3 GHz in boost. And it's a great value for both gaming and content creation. Combined with this motherboard, the total for the bundle was $229.99, which is an amazing deal. Basically, the CPU itself ended up costing me just $98.20. Next up, the cooler. To keep this CPU nice and cool, I went with the Thermaltake Austria 400 RGB. It's a solid mid-range air cooler, quite reliable and clean looking. I paid $49.99, it also has a RGB lighting, I'll show you later when the PC is on. Inside the box, you'll get the cooler itself, one 120mm fan and all the M5 mounting hardware. Nothing too fancy, but it feels well built, solid and clean. Mounting it was simple. Everything lined up perfectly with the M5 socket. Once it tidied down, it feels secure and sturdy. Then I connected the CPU fan cable and the RGB connector, so it's all ready for later when we power this thing on. Alright, that's the cooler installed. Next, we got the memory. I went with the Corsair Wingens RGB 32GB, two 16GB sticks running at 6000MHz and they cost me $209.99. Fast, reliable and they also have RGB. To be honest with you guys, one of my priorities with this build was RGB lighting, something that emphasized it's a gaming PC but not too fancy, just giving a cozy, immersive gaming vibe. Corsair makes great memory, stable, fast and easy to work with. Installing them was quick and easy, just line them up and press down until you heard that satisfying click. There we go, both sticks locked in perfectly. That's 32 gigs of DDR5 ready to go. Alright, now it's time for storage. I went with the Samsung 990 EVO Plus 1TB NVMe SSD. It cost me $94.99 at Micro Center. One of the best drives you can get for both gaming and video editing at this price. This tiny thing can reach read speeds over 7000 megabytes per second, which means faster boot times, faster project loading and no waiting around. And that's it. No cables, no mess. NVMe drives are honestly one of the best things that ever happened to PC building. Now for the case, I'm using the Montec X3 Mesh ATX Mid Tower. I paid $69.99. It's a clean looking budget case with great airflow. 
and it's actually come with 6 pre-installed RGB fans. 3 in the front, 2 on the top and 1 in the back. Honestly, for under $70, this thing looks way better than I expected. Tempered glass on the side gives that modern gaming look and there's plenty of room inside for cable management. Installing the motherboard was straightforward, everything lined up perfectly. Even the cutouts for cables are well placed, which make building a lot easier. Alright, the case is ready, next up the power supply. I'm using the Corsair CX650M, a 650W 80 plus bronze semi modular unit. It cost me $89.99 and Corsair makes some one of the most reliable PCUs out there, so this one was an easy pick for me. It's semi modular, which means only the essential cables are attached. That keeps the build clean and makes cable management so much easier. 650 watts is plenty for the system with the Ryzen 7600X and the RTX 5060. I mounted the power supply at the bottom of the case and ran the main cables through the back for a clean look. Cable management took a bit of time, but it was definitely worth it. I want everything to look clean and organized. Power supply is installed. Next up, the graphics card. And finally, this is the ASUS GeForce RTX 5060 Prime with 8GB of GDDR7 memory. I paid $299.99 for it. It's a triple fan design, big, quiet and capable of smooth 1080p ultra gaming or even 1440p with DLSS and optimized settings. I was deciding between the dual fan and triple fan version of this card, but since my case has enough room and both were the same price, I went with the triple fan. Better cooling, less noise and overall it just feels like the smarter choice. And to be honest with you guys, I've always been more of a Nvidia guy. I know AMD has some great alternatives, but Nvidia cards has always worked better for me. And I understand that for higher end gaming, especially at 1440p, 8GB of VRAM is already starting to feel a bit limited. Ideally something like an RTX 5070 would handle that better. But my goal with this build was to stay within a budget of around $1000 to $1150. I'll upgrade it later when the time is right. Installing it was simple, just line it up and gently press it into place. Then secure it with a couple of screws on the bracket. I connected the power cable and make sure to keep everything tidy, no cables blocking airflow. Since this card is pretty big and heavy, I decided to add a GPU support bracket, just to keep it from sagging over time. Now it looks safe and stable. And that's the graphics card installed. With that, the main build is complete. But before turning it on for the first time, I just want to mention that I also bought the 2K gaming monitor from MSI, it's pretty budget friendly, but I'll make a separate video about it, so stay tuned. Alright, now let's plug everything in and turn it on for the first time. Hopefully everything works and I didn't mess anything up during the build. There we go, it's a leaf. I already prepared a USB stick with Windows 11, so let's install it and get the system running. Next, next, agree, install. And just like that, Windows is installed, everything booted perfectly and we're ready to move on. And now it's time to install the GPU drivers, so let's head over the NVIDIA website, download the latest drivers for the RTX 5060 and get everything updated. Just download, hit install and let it do its thing. And now we can finally start testing some games. Before we start, I want to clarify one thing. I'm not including esports titles like Counter Strike 2, Valorant, Fortnite, Epic Legends and similar games. Why? Because any modern mid-range GPU including the RTX 5060 can run those games on high settings without any real issues. And just to be clear, I'm not saying these games are bad or too easy. I actually enjoy Counter Strike 2 and Fortnite myself. I just don't see any real point on showing them here. Because they won't tell you much about the actual performance of this build. My goal is to test this system in real, demanding AAA games. The ones that can actually push your hardware and show what this budget build is really capable of. And now we can finally start testing some games. And we started with the first and probably the heaviest game in this entire lineup, Cyberpunk 2077. This game is still very demanding even in 2025. There's a lot of effects on the screen, tons of lighting, reflections and many NPCs walking around. All of that puts real pressure on the system. For this test, I'm running the game at 1080p and 1440p using the Ultra preset with DLSS set to balance mode. 
And I'm not using any ray tracing in this test because the RTX 5060 has only 8GB of VRAM and in games like Cyberpunk it's get fully maxed out with RTON. I want to show real gameplay performance, not unrealistic settings, so all Cyberpunk tests will be done on ultra settings without ray tracing. At 1440p ultra, the frame rate stays very playable at around 70 to 80 FPS. At 1080p Ultra, the game is running at around 95 to 105 FPS. For how heavy this game is, these results are actually really solid, especially for a budget build like this. And what I really like here is how stable the gameplay feels overall. Even when you're just driving around the city or walking through busy areas, the frame rate stays smooth and consistent without major spikes. So overall, playing it on this build feels completely comfortable and enjoyable. Next up we have Days Gone. Compared to Cyberpunk, this game is much better optimized and it usually delivers higher frame rates, even on mid-range GPU like the RTX 5060. For this test, I am using the very high preset at both 1080p and 1440p. No DLSS or FSR here, the game runs natively, so this is a good way to see raw performance without any upscaling. At 1440p very high, the frame rate stay very comfortable at around 90 to 100 FPS, which is more than enough for a great gameplay experience. At 1080p very high, the game runs around 120 to 130 FPS, staying smooth during driving and exploration. What I like about Days Gone on this build is how stable the performance is. Overall, this is one of the best running games on this system and it's really good match for a budget 1080p or 1440p setup. Now let's take a look at Red Dead Redemption 2, one of the most demanding open world games ever made. Even in 2025, this game can push almost any GPU, especially at higher resolutions. For this test, I am using the quality preset which is balanced mix of high and ultra settings. I am also using DLSS on balance mode, ray testing at both 1440p and 1080p. At 1440p, the frame rate stays around 65 to 75 FPS, which still feels stable and perfectly playable for this type of game. At 1080p, the game runs around 80 to 90 FPS, with smooth performance during exploration, riding, and combat. The game is heavy, but once it loads the open world, the frame rate doesn't swing too much. Even in towns, forests, or wide open areas, the experience stays smooth. And overall, this build handles Red Dead Redemption 2 pretty well. Next up is Ark Riders, a new sci-fi shooter with big open areas and modern graphics. Even without combat, the game can be demanding because of its lighting, shadows, and large environment, so it works well as a benchmark. For this test, I'm using the same settings for both 1440p and 1080p, high presets, TLSS on quality, ray tracing set to dynamic medium, and frame generation turned off. At 1440p high, the game runs at about 100 to 110 FPS, and everything stays smooth while moving around the map. At 1080p high, the performance go up to around 110 to 120 FPS. This game came out just a couple of weeks ago and it's actually very well optimized. The game runs clean without any noticeable issues or slowdowns and overall feels very stable on this setup. Overall, our creator performs really well here and the RTX 5060 handle is easily at both 1080p and 1440p. And that's it. That's the all the game tests. I hope this gives you a clear idea of how this build performs. Honestly, I'm very happy with this build. It performs well and I like how it looks. For the budget I had, I feel I got a really good balance of power, price and features. The RTX 5060 might not be the strongest card out there, but for 1080p and 1440p gaming it performs surprisingly well. And in every game I tested, the results were more than good enough for a smooth, comfortable experience. This is also my first ever PC build, so the whole process was well new to me, but everything worked out and I'm really proud of the final result. In the future, I probably upgrade the GPU, maybe add more storage and keep improving the system step by step. But right now, for the price I paid, I'm honestly very satisfied with that I got. Guys, let me know what you think about this build. I'm really interested in your thoughts. I read all the comments and I reply to everyone, so feel free to share your opinion. And if you watch all the way to this point, thank you so much, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the like button and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.